Oh, hello YouTube. You know what? I'm glad you stopped by because today I got a few installs I'm going to be doing on my 66 C10 truck here. If this is your first time watching and you're new to the channel, go ahead and check out my page, like the videos you like, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with everything I'm doing on this 66 truck. And I'm glad you came in. Hi! I didn't know you were did making you, a video. Did you know this is my wife? Hi. Her name's Sarah, the interrupter. <laughs> well, we need to communicate better. That was fun. Anyways, so one of the main installs I've been wanting to do this truck for some time is cruise control. I'll tell you what, after gr cruising on the highway for 20, 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour, whatever, old right foot just gets tired of holding that pedal. So Dakota Digital makes several cruise control kits for different types of speedometers, transmissions, whatever situation you have for your tip particular vehicle. So I got a kit that's gonna work, I believe, best for this truck. Along with that, we're gonna be replacing the main wiring harness under the dash with the fuse block. And while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the stereo system in this truck. Because believe it or not, it still has the original AM radio in it, and it still works. I put a speaker I had laying around in the dash years ago when I got the truck, and it works. Doesn't pick up a signal very well, plus it's just AM radio, so I want to modernize the stereo system a little bit and go ahead and update it to modern day standard. So I think to do this install, I think the easiest thing to do is to pull that seat out because it's going to give me a lot of real estate in the cab to move around and work while I'm rewiring it and adding the stereo and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out all the parts here on the workbench, show you everything, show you the part numbers. That way, if you're interested in it, you can go ahead and then you know what to get. So, all right guys, it's 2022 and I got a new set of videos coming your way. So let's get to this. All right, so here's the main under dash harness. This is for 66 C10 with the factory gauges. They also make one if you have the factory style lights, if you wanna keep that. This is from classicparts.com. However, this is made by American Auto Wire, which is a really good company. We make really good products. Matter of fact, all the harnesses I've replaced in the truck throughout the various things I've done has all been from classic parts, all American Auto Wire. So, pretty nice looking kit. Here is the cruise control. This is from Dakota Digital. There's the part number there. I got this from Summit Racing. $356, I believe. There's the actual main cruise control unit. And up under this little rubber flap is all these switches you have to change depending upon what kind of engine, transmission, various things like that. So there's the wiring that comes on it. That's why I think I'm gonna go ahead and install the wiring first before I do any of the any anything else. Here's the destructions to it. Doesn't look like it's gonna to be too bad of an install, but it is kind of in depth. So it may take some time getting this going. Now, this isn't for a mechanical driven, mechanical speedometer that has a mechanical cable. And there's two options you can get. You can get the one with this cruise control switch which is basically a universal switch. You can mount this anywhere on the dash or anywhere you choose to, to uh, install it. They also make one that has the turn signal style switch. That way if you have a later model steering column that has a provision for that, you can get that particular kit as well. I don't obviously, so I didn't get that one. There's the mechanical. This part goes to the transmission and then, and then the other part connects to the cable. Got the destructions in there as well. And of course, here's the various hardware, zip ties, conduit, and then the, the two different style brackets for, I think one holds this unit on and then whatever that is. So once we get into that part, then we'll, we'll figure out what everything does. Get this out of the way for now. Now, as far as the stereo system, we're gonna do a little different approach. This is the cheaper option that I got from 
Um, I got this from uh, Amazon. This is a hundred bucks, and this is a powered amplifier. I believe this is a. Uh, 500 watts. This is a Bluetooth amplifier, so basically you can you can stream music with this. You don't need an actual radio to do this. Downside to that is you have you won't have anything for like FM, AM radio stations. And believe it or not, this is actually an all-terrain system. So if you had like an ATV or something like that, or even a boat, you could get something like this because most of those type of vehicles don't have a provision for a radio. So this is an alternative to do that. And I think these are also, these might be water resistant. I'm not 100% sure. So that's going to work out. It also has auxiliary outputs if you want to run an amp or even a powered subwoofer like that right there. I got this from Amazon as well. Believe it or not, it was $95. And it got, it had a lot of great reviews. It's made by Blau Punkit. Blau Punkit. However you say that. So there's the, I guess that's the part number there. Nice little unit. Not too bad. We'll look at that later when we get to that point. And then the other thing we're going to be doing for the stereo is these speaker panels. They do make a deluxe and a standard. These are the deluxe speakers. And there is the part number there. This got this also from classicparts.com. That's the 60 to 66 C10. That openings for that that uh, vent, ankle vent, I guess you would. That's uh near the near your feet. So I got the obviously like I said, I got the deluxe 300 watts max. That'll work out. And the last thing I got is some sound deadener. Uh, I got 18 sheets, 12 inches by 23. And this stuff is made in the USA, which I do like that kind. I like buying stuff that's made here in the great US of A. It's more universal because they do make kits that are for, you know, if you have like a Camaro, Chevelle, Mustang, truck, something like that. They do make kits that fit your cab, depending upon transmission hump and all that. However, I got some metal work I need to do in the future, so I didn't want to get any expensive kit like that until all that metal work's done. So we're going to go with this universal stuff. We'll kind of lay everything out once we get the, the seat and the floor mat and all that stuff out. We'll kind of see how everything's going to... We'll kind of spread all this out and see how much real estate we can cover with this sound deadening material. Hopefully, I can get a lot of the cab covered up and kind of sound deaden some of it, help with vibrations and maybe quieten it down inside the cab. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera. We're going to go ahead and get that seat pulled out, get the floor mat pulled out, and uh, we will go from there. All right, guys, let's do this. Pull the seat out. All right, got the seat out. Can you believe I still got the factory tools in place? Believe it or not, when I did the, uh, when I had the seat recovered, I took all these tools and cleaned them up and painted them. That's the closest paint I could find in a rattle can to kind of match the the floor so we'll take that stuff out of the way as well probably leave the seat belts in place I don't think they're gonna be in my way too much I still gotta pull the floor mat out which means I have to take this stuff off these um, kick guards or side rails what are you gonna call them and then pull all this stuff out so all right and we'll get back to it
tell I got some metal work in my future. This is the worst side of it. Makes the floor and the rocker. It's got some uh, ventilation there. I don't know if that's a factory option. I'm gonna say it's not. That side is getting there. I, actually, that rocker held up a lot better than the passenger. Surface rust, a little pitting maybe there. That could probably be saved with just cleaning it up. That's gonna have to be fixed in the future. De definitely this side. So, yeah, I've been kinda, I haven't opened got one out I've been kind of playing with these deals to kind of see how it's gonna look I'll be honest with some of these I'll probably just cover the hole up stick them up in there as well you gotta make provisions because that those rubber mat has holes in it that's what holds it up these factory little tabs there so the only thing I may not do since the seat, since all this part is exposed, when you open the doors, I'll probably maybe stop the mat, like right before the seat, or right, maybe right in between the seat bracket bolts or something, stop right there. That way you can't see it. But uh, we'll figure all that out here in a minute. So got the battery disconnected. So next thing is, I guess start, Disconnecting everything we'll open up the new wiring harness kind of lay everything out and see how it all looks and uh, And then we'll go from there All right, here we go start pulling this thing apart now, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but all these fuse Holders these tabs are very rusty. That's one reason why I want to change all this plus, you know harness 56 years old so as you get older, you don't work as well as you did when you were young. So, you know how that goes. Yeah, I may have to, honestly, I may have to pull this out. But I'm going to try to do it without doing it. So we'll see how that works. Because there is a harness to this, but it's separate from the main harness. So I should not have to pull it out, but we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and open the hood, unplug the outside main plugs that go to the engine harness and go from there. Dang, how long is this screw? I guess it's released. I'll show y'all here in a minute, but I'm just kind of disappointed it didn't even come with new fuses. So I got to reuse all my old fuses. Looks like there's just two holding it in, so. That's it. Dang, these screws are long. I guess I gotta go through all that pad and stuff, so. Guess we'll start unplugging all this stuff. Yes. I took a few pictures of all this stuff, so I kinda know where everything goes. Especially all the stuff that I added. Like this. This one right here I'm about to unplug is the gas gauge. This right here goes to my tachometer. I was looking at that, I was like, where did that come from? I don't remember buying that. I realized it came in that dash kit. So you can plug your dash in, or your uh, tack in, and still have an option to power whatever you need to power on. If we got this, goes to the this is for the dome light. Oh, there we go. You got that one as well. That, that is for your high beam switch. Oh yeah, there may be tabs on that. Oh man. That's why it wouldn't come out. It's a couple of tabs, little snap tabs there. And that worked out. For so these. Looks like that's the brake switch there in this thing right here. Let me get this air duct out of here without damaging it. Oh, there we 
There we go. She did not want to come out, guys. She did not want to come out. Yeah, that thing is hard as a rock almost. Oh, there's no flex in this deal. Part of it now. Yeah, see, I needed that out of the way because now I can access whatever this is right here. So that connector right there is part of the engine harness. It goes right there. I got kind of tucked behind the spark plug wires. Man, I had to take some pliers and grab a hold of it and just twist and pull, twist and pull till it came off. Kind of kicking myself because I did not get a I did not get an O-ring like that or a grommet. I should have ordered one. I don't know if I can get the new connector through there because it comes in. Obviously, it's going to come in through the inside out. So more likely, I guess I'm going to have to cut this off to get it um, to get it out. So, just thought I'd share that with you. That was kind of a kind of a booger to get out. Put this connector here. We're going right by this airline. Oh, dang. I can tell some of this stuff has never been unplugged probably in its entire life. Dang. Easy. Easy. Oh, man. I bet that thing has not been unplugged since probably 66 when it got plugged in. I don't know. Phew. That thing was stuck in there. All right. I think everything's disconnected. So let's ravel this thing out and see what we got. Oi. Son of a... Man, I'm getting too old. Well, guys, I made a mistake. I should have ordered the rubber grommets. There's no way this is going to pull through. Woo! Yeah, that rubber is hard as a rock. wire the truck up and just leave these grommets out make sure everything works make sure all my lights and all that stuff functions like it's supposed to Whew. I mean I'm squeezing pretty hard and that thing's barely bending hey all right now I got the headlight switch to take off we got this connector here connector's got a screw on it. I'll have to see how that one looks because my harness, my new harness don't have a, a connector with a hole in it. Well, what other surprises we got here? She is holding on. She does not want to go. truck right okay I'm just making sure I ain't working on some modern day truck wow oh shoo there it is let's go look at it on the bench well there she is the old harness one of the main reasons why I replaced it right here look at all that rust 
I actually used a Dremel a few months back and cleaned these tabs up a little bit, kind of helped, but they're pretty rusty. And I've had a couple of fuses blow from time to time, so. Here's the new one. Kind of frustrating, don't come with fuses. I don't know why not. I mean, they're pretty cheap. Why not stick some fuses in there? But it doesn't, so we'll have to use all the ones out of there, plus the, plus the flasher there. Compared to all the connectors, the only thing that's slightly different is this. This harness, or these pair of connectors go to the, uh, they power the gauges. And on the original one, it's more of an, uh, an encased assembly there, and it has a little hole that screws to the, either some kind of metal tab or bracket on top of the steering column. So that's kind of frustrating. You don't get to utilize that mounting spot anymore, so... But it'll still work. Only thing additional I see to this harness that is not on the original is this right here. I don't know what's going on here. It's got some kind of jumper. So, and this is heavy gauge purple. The only heavy gauge purple wire I see is right here at the key switch connector. That's pretty thick. Looks like it's 10 gauge. Where's that connector on over here? Here it is. Let's see, that one's not as thick. So hopefully that's not a that's not gonna be an issue as far as getting this thing going. So but everything else looks the same. That's the only unusual thing that's added to the harness outside of this part here being uh, not the same as the other one. Everything else is the same. So now I get the glorious fun of routing and installing all this stuff. So what I'm probably going to do is just time lapse through that because it's a pretty tedious process and I don't know how many times I'm going to be moving stuff around to get this thing mounted to get it the way I want it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, set up the camera, time lapse through all this, and once that's done, we'll go from there. Well, guys, I'm pretty frustrated right now. So these two connectors here, if you can see, it's going to be kind of hard to see because I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. These two connectors here come off the main new harness that we're installing, and they connect to this harness here, which goes to the gauges and lights on the dash. Well, this connector right here, this six-pin connector, get my hands out of the way, will not, will not plug in. No matter what, they're almost the same diameter, really, in size. This one's no problem. This one goes together just fine. A little bit more push, but it goes in there. This one does not. So I'm kind of frustrated about that. So what I'm going to have to do, basically, is unpin all these pins, all these connectors, from the... And then put the original one back on it. Which, I guess on the bright side, I'd rather use this anyways. Because at least it has that mounting spot with the screw that I can use. And it didn't have that doing it this way. So, I will show you all real quick on the old harness how to unpin it. So, as you can tell, there's the all the wires that came off the, the original connector there. But basically, see that little tab? It's kind of lifted up. That's what holds it in place. When you're trying to do, with the little screwdriver, you're trying to push that thing down and then pull it out. So we'll do the same thing right here on this connector. I'll show you. See, it's already see, it's stuck in there. We'll do that little recess, that little groove. Maybe the smallest little screwdriver. You just kind of stick it in there, let, let it up. Sometimes you got to move it back and forth. And that's it. See that little pin right there? And then once you stick it back in, just kind of 
lift that pin up a little bit and then pin faces down that little that little tab faces down in the groove slide it back in kind of heard it click there man it's in there so unfortunately that's what we're gonna have to do but i guess on the bright side now i get to put this back on and then i can mount it to its factory location where it was before so i guess i can't be too upset about it but we'll go ahead and unpin that install this connector and we'll go from there so yeah i zip tied that into place of course it goes right there where my finger is right there. there's a little screw hole that's where we'll screw into um if you do the same thing i do hopefully you don't have to do what i just did but i did and it's kind of kind of frustrating but at least i get to use the factory one so now i can screw it into the factory location and then help secure the wiring harness a little bit better so all right, guys, just wanted to show you real quick, so I'm going to get back at it. All right, guys, real quick, check this out. This is why I wanted to replace the main harness under the dash. Look at all that rust on those tabs. And you see that's where the flasher goes. Look how hot that got. It's all melted. I don't know if the flasher was shorted at some point. And then you got that going on right there. Look at that pink wire. Looks like it got some heat to it as well. The insulation's all bubbled up and distorted. And then I noticed on this connector here, it had some electrical tape that I never put on it. So I removed it just to see what was going on. Looks like that wire got hot too. Look at the insulation all bubbled up and distorted. Got some bare copper showing. So this is why I wanted to replace the under dash harness because I don't want any issues when I'm going on a long road trip. And I don't, you know, I don't want to have an electrical fire or even worse, a truck fire, you know, so... There you go. So now I pulled all the fuses out. I was going to use them, but I forgot I had this thing. So I'm going to replace all the fuses, except I cannot replace. I don't have any new three amps because it didn't come in this kit. And I don't think I have any. So I'm going to have to reuse those for now until I get some new ones. But I'll save the old ones because they're still good. But I'm going to go ahead and start installing the fuses on the new harness and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I got the new wiring harness in. Got new fuses in the fuse block. So I'll show you all that here in a second. So now we get to test everything, see if everything works. So fuse, fuel pump off. Go ahead and key it on. Check my blower motor, see if it's working. There's high speed, medium, low. That's working. It's amazing after all these years that thing's still working. Let's check the wipers. Low speed. High speed. So that's working. Let's go ahead and key it on. See if the truck starts. Hey, y'all. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Remember that additional heavy gauge purple wire can, uh, yeah, the connector with the jumper on it? If you disconnect it, turn the fuel pump off. Nothing. Will not turn over. So this is kind of a, I don't know what why they made this this way. Was, I'm going to use this as like a theft deterrent when they finish taping this off to hide the purple and um, kind of hide this and tuck it away somewhere. If I ever want to pull that apart, I can. That way nobody can start the truck. So now, say hi, buddy. 
okay? Okay, hi. So there's the fluid fuse block. I still gotta tidy up some of the wires, but got all the new fuses in it. So now, let's check our lights. The light works. There's light. There's a regular the light works. Headlights. Are they yep. working? All right. Yeah, they're working. Let's see if the high beams are working. Can we find the switch? Yeah, that's working. Well, the brake light works, buddy? Yep. We'll go check the back of the truck, see if the brake lights work. No. Are they coming on? Yep. They on? Yeah. All right. So the brake lights work. All right. The only issues I've been having. Oh, got to turn the key off for the blinker to work. So as you can tell, the left blinker's working there. But the right blinker I've been having issues with for whatever reason. I don't know if something going on in this socket is not grounding properly. It's working in the back. I'm sure the rear is working as well. So it's working, isn't it, buddy? Can't really see all the dash lights. They're hard to see, but they look like they're all lighting up. So yeah, guys. Pretty much gonna call on this video. The only thing I need to do. As you can tell right there, I still gotta, I'm gonna order those rubber grommets. And once those come in and I install them, then I can correct that. That's how I got it for now. All right guys, I'm pretty much gonna call on this video. Installing the wiring harness, it's a tedious process. A lot of uh, ups and downs. That floor, that's the, that cab floor is not a very comfortable floor to lay on, even with the floor mat I, I was using, but it's done. Everything seems to pre-work and I still gotta try to figure out that turn signal up front but I'll deal with that at a, at a later date so video number two we're gonna go ahead and do start laying out the uh, sound deadening material and after that we'll start getting the speakers in place the, the uh, Bluetooth speak uh, Bluetooth radio and then that subwoofer get all that laid out and everything wired up so like subscribe and until then thanks for watching you wanna say say anything buddy before we turn it off yep what? Say something. You're buried.